In this lesson, we are going to talk about uh, how to use the determinant given a transformation to, f uh, to find the area or volume of a given region under a transformation. So the theorem, so this theorem is, uh, is a more general case um, than the preceding theorem that we saw. So this one, it's the same idea. If you have a uh, linear transformation determined by some, uh, by a two by two matrix, and if you have a, uh, if you let S, so if we let S be a region R2, then we can find the area of that region under the transformation, um, given that we know the, the, the matrix that's doing the transformation. So that area of that, the area of the transformation of S is going to be the determinant of A times the area of S. And this can also be uh, used for the three by, for when a matrix is a three by three. In that case, we're going to get volume. So here's a vo here's a I'm sorry here's an example. Um, it's a volume problem where we're given uh, we're, we're letting T be a linear transformation determined by this matrix A, where A, B, and C is bigger than or equal to zero. So we're going to let S be a unit ball whose bounding surface is given by uh, this equation here that you see. So first thing is we want to show that T, is, T of S, the transformation is bounded by the ellipsoid with, with the following equation. And then secondly, we want to determine the volume of S under the transformation of T. Okay, so the first thing, okay, let's do problem one. All right, so to show something that is, to show uh, something is bounded, under a transformation, we we have to pick a general vector in that uh, in that uh, in that set. Okay. Okay. So the idea. So here's the idea. Okay. So we're going to pick a vector. Okay. Some generic vector in S. Okay then we need to show, okay, so then we need to show that, okay, okay, we need to show that x lies inside the transformation of s. So mathematically we do this by um, we're gonna again. We pick a general vector value and then go through the some of the calculations. Go and apply the transformation and see what we get. Okay, so we're gonna let. Okay, that's so that's the idea. So we're gonna let x. X is gonna be a vector. Okay, in R three. So we're gonna call it x one x2, x3. Okay. And so keep in mind that x lies in, so, we're, so x lies in the, uh, the region. Okay. Okay, because of this condition. Okay, and actually it's well, it's less than or equal to one. Yeah, so when it's equal to one, that's on the surface. Okay, so we want it to be inside or it can be on the surface, doesn't matter. So this is our general vector value. Okay, so let's apply that. Let's apply the transformation matrix. Okay, let's multiply the matrix with X. Okay, so we're gonna get, okay, so we have A time A acting on X and that's gonna give us U. Okay, so we have A zero zero, 0, B, 0, 0, 0, C times 
x1, x2. So this is the vector that we that we're choosing. And then we have u, this will be u1, u2, u3. So that is the left, that's the I'm sorry, right hand side. So now from here, okay, we can expand on this. So x1, okay. Okay, so x1 will be equal to u1 over a1. X2 is going to be U2 over A2. Uh, let's see. A over A2, sorry, over B. Not A2. So U1 over A, sorry, A is here. U2 over B, and X3 is uh, U3 over C. Okay, so this gives us uh, this gives us the representation of going from from x into u. Okay, so now let's plug these values in. So we know x one, x two, and x three in terms of u one, u two, and u three. So let's plug these into our condition here, which is up here. So I have to, okay, so our condition is, so plugging into the condition where we have a sphere, okay. Okay, so we're going to get, so remember for a, right, so for a sphere, Okay, we have, remember for that it's going to be, right, so if you have a sphere with including the surface, this is the general formula of that sphere in 3D, right, less than or equal to 1. Okay. All right, because notice in the problem, okay, we have this is the bounding surface is this, it's equal to one. So that's exactly when that's the that tells you the radius of the sphere is one, but everything else inside, for every point, every vector inside will be less than will be strictly less than one. But we also have to include the outside, the the along the surface. Okay, so now we're gonna plug these values in into this. Okay. So you're gonna get u one squared. Oops over a squared plus u2 squared over b, b squared this is squared plus u3 squared over c squared and that is less than or equal to 1. So therefore we showed okay under this transformation we showed that these values, okay, u, u is in the, uh, lies inside s, or resides inside the uh, s, if, if u lies inside the transformation of s. Okay, so u, so that means u belongs to the transformation of s, which is from there, which is what we can see from there. Right, so that is a very general. Um, that is something that is uh, that's a very um, general approach uh, for for showing you for showing something um, given a transformation. So you pick a vector, operate on it using a matrix, and then see if it satisfies the property for that shape. Okay. All right, so. Okay, so now that's so we showed we showed the first part. Now let's actually calculate the uh, the volume of that sphere under the transformation. Okay. Okay, so that's the second part. Determine the volume s under the transformation of t.
Okay, so the volume, okay, the volume of is going to be, again, using the theorem, okay? Right, we need to use the, uh, the we need to know the determinant of the transform, of the A, of the value A, which is going, which is doing the transformation. And then we're gonna multiply it by the volume of S. So I'm just gonna write that here. times the area of S. Okay, so the determinant, okay, since A since A is equal to A zero 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 B zero 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 C, this is a all right, this is you have only the you have values only on the main diagonal here and zero everywhere else. So using the property of the right or the lower or upper triangular form, whichever one, you're going to multiply the entries to get the determinant A. The main entries. So it's just going to be A times B times C. So that's going to go here. All right, and then the area of S, the area that we're transforming is, the, the area, the region that we're given is a sphere. So the volume of a of the sphere, it's a unit sphere. So that's going to be 4 thirds pi. And this is gonna be, actually no, it's gonna be volume. Not area, sorry. So it's the volume of S. So the volume that we're working with is a sphere. Okay. So just recall the volume, right? The volume of a sphere. Oops. Let's do that here. Right, the volume of the sphere is just four thirds pi r cubed. Okay. In this case, we're working with a unit sphere. Okay. Any so anytime we are we, we use the word unit um, in geometry, it always means referring to the radius of one. So this in this case, it's going to be four thirds pi. So therefore, okay, we have. Okay, so the volume of this, okay, so the volume of S under this transformation will actually be uh, 4 thirds pi times A times B times C, okay, all right, okay, so that's that's how you apply the determinant and the uh, and the transformation theorem. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, this the volume of this transformation under S that is actually um, an ellipsoid. Okay. Okay, so it's kind of like a. Kind of like a football shape, but not quite, not quite as pointy on the ends. Okay.